I was looking back at my five GIF videos that I made last year and the year before that, and both of those videos are supposed to be projects that you can make very quickly and easily for holidays. But looking back, I don't think I did a very good job of making them quick or easy. Some of those projects are done over the course of several days. Um, so in this video, I'm going to try to make some actually quick projects that you can make in about 30 minutes or less. So for this first project, I have this pretty mangled piece of scrap here. And I don't really know what I was doing with this, but it's pretty messed up. So I'm going to remill it down to a 2 inch by 2 inch by 4 inch block at the table saw. Now I'm going to bring that block over to the drill press and I'm going to put in a hole saw bit. The exact size of the hole saw bit doesn't really matter that much, but the one that I'm using is about 4 inches. And now I'm setting the depth for the hole saw bit and this actually does matter. Try to set it to about a half inch. And then the last step is setup. I'm just going to eyeball this block until it's somewhat centered with the bit, and then I can set up a fence. This step also doesn't really need to be exact, but it's going to look better if you can get it as close to center with the bit as possible. And then I'm going to cut out a bunch of curves, about a half inch apart. Uh, I really did not do like any measuring for this project. I'm just guessing on everything. Um, but yeah, about a half inch apart and I cut about five of those slots. So now I'm going to flip the block to do the other side and then spin the block around so that the radius of the hole saw bit is going in the other direction. And then I'm going to line up the hole saw bit with the bottom of the last cut that I made and cut down again. Now I'm going to turn the block over to the opposite face that I just cut and do the same thing one more time. Now I'm going to mark out the center, and then I'm going to use a 1.5 inch Forstner bit, or you could use a spade bit as well. And I'm going to drill down as far as my drill press will let me, which is about 2.5 inches, I think. And that is it. This little candle lantern is done. And I'm going to use one of these fake tea candles because I don't want my house to burn down. For this next project, I'm going to carve out some bowls, and you're going to need a sliding miter saw for that. I don't think that a normal miter saw will have the right features, but just about every sliding miter saw, cheap or expensive, is going to have the ability to do this. The first thing I'm doing is I'm switching out my normal 12-inch blade for a 10-inch blade, and I'm just doing that because it lets me cut a little bit of a deeper bowl. You could go even smaller as long as it fits on your miter saw and cut an even deeper bowl, but I think a 10 inch blade works or looks the best. Also one more thing before I start making this bowl, do not use a small piece of scrap. Try to give yourself, I don't know, at least 8 inches of extra board bigger than the size bowl that you want to make, um, just to keep your hands away from the blade. So for the first step of this bowl, I am going to set my blade to 45 degrees and then cut off that first edge. And now most, if not all, sliding miter saws are going to have this little depth switch that I just put down that lets me make depth cuts. And I set the depth of my saw to about an eighth inch shy of all the way through. And I'm going to make my first cut, try to center the blade on the bowl. And then I'm going to twist this little lock here that will keep the saw from sliding. So now I'm going to make a series of cuts to carve out the first half of the bowl 
going 45 degrees in one direction, and then my miter saw goes 45 degrees in both directions so that I can cut the other side. But if yours doesn't, you can just flip your board over to the other side. I'm done with the carving, so now I can flip up the depth switch and unlock the sliding lock. And then I'm going to cut the other three sides of the bolt to 45 degrees as well. And maybe you like it already as it is, but I think it looks too square, so I'm going to round over all the edges at the belt sander. Also, the wood that I used for this project was some reclaimed wood that had some paint on it. So I was going to have to clean these up anyways, um, but once I cleaned them up, it turned out to be some nice looking cedar underneath. I have this really worn out flap sander for my drill, and I'm going to use that to get rid of any imperfections on the inside of the bowl. And then the last step is just to add some oil to finish the bowl. This last project may take over 30 minutes. I was able to get it done in another 30 minutes, but this is also like the third one that I've made. So it might take you longer. Um, I just really wanted to make this because I made a vase last year in my last five gifts video. And I really feel like I overcomplicated it and made it hard to make. And this one, I'm gonna make a vase without a lathe in as simple way as possible. So I have this piece of two by six that you just saw me cut the face at about a 10 degree angle at the table saw. And now I'm at the miter saw to cut a cove and I'm gonna cut this cove in the same way that I kind of carved out that bowl in the last project. So I have my depth gauge set and I have my blade locked so it doesn't slide and I'm just gonna make a bunch of cuts um, to carve out this cove. And also I have the blade set at 45 degrees so I can cut a more narrow cove with a smaller radius. If you leave the blade at zero degrees, it's gonna cut a really big cove. So that's why I set the angle at 45 degrees. So now I'm going to set everything back to normal. I'm going to set the saw at zero degrees again. I'm going to unlock the sliding lock and I'm going to flip up the depth switch. And now I'm going to cut out the piece of the vase. And depending on how many sides of this vase you want, uh, you'll set the angle accordingly. I want eight sides, so I have my blade tilted at 22 and a half degrees. So I'm going to cut the angle on one side and then I'm going to flip my board around to the other side of the miter saw so I can cut the opposite angle. All the sides have to be the same length for the vase to fit together right, and the easiest way to make sure that they're all the same size would be to be using a stop block. But if I use a stop block, then I can't really use the left side of my miter saw. So I am still going to use a stop block, but I'm going to use a really long piece so that I can use the stop block as a fence as well, if that makes sense.
I got distracted and cut way more of the sides than I really needed, but that ended up being a good thing because now I can kind of pick and choose which are the best ones. And to put these base sides together, I'm just going to use CA glue. You could use wood glue as well, but I'm trying to do this quickly, and I'm not that worried about strength with this. One thing that I remember doing in the vase last year that I still think is a good tip is to put together the vase in halves so that you can then sand the two halves of the vase flat at the belt sander so then they fit together properly um, when you put the two halves together. Because if you just glue them all together at once, if the angle is off at all, there's going to be a gap um, between the last piece and the first piece. And last step before finish, I'm just going to drill a small hole in the top to hold a flower or whatever I decide to put in the vase. Cutting the cove left a bunch of saw marks, um, and I started to sand those out, but I decided I kind of liked the rustic look that it gave it, so I added a dark stain over top to kind of highlight those cuts. I put a fake plant in this vase. But if you wanted to use like a real plant for this face, you could drill out a bigger hole and then put in a glass vial.